Last night saw another vote on the Senate reform bill. We've been talking over the past few days about some of the inclusions in it, but I've acknowledged along the way that I am anything but an expert on these sorts of things. So you know what we did? We went out and we got an expert and uh, that expert joins us now. Senior reporter for Reveal at the Center for Investigative Journalism in San Francisco and two-time Peabody Award winner, Aaron Glantz. Welcome to the Damage Report. It's good to be with you. Thank you for having me. Uh, very glad to have you on. And so uh, I'm curious, as as someone who has been obviously tracking this very closely, uh, as well as your previous bailout efforts, like after 2008, um, what's your initial read of this first piece of legislation? What, what do you think about its inclusions and, and what's not actually inside of it? Well, I mean, the first is it's gigantic. And we're going to look back at this moment many years later and see that this is the biggest government intervention in the U.S. economy uh, since the Great Depression. Uh, the trillions of dollars that are being thrown around, potentially six trillion dollars. Um, the stimulus under Obama was under one trillion dollars. So we're talking about an order of magnitude greater. Uh, we're talking about a bill that was passed with not a single committee hearing. Um, and where we are being asked to trust the Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, who is a vulture capitalist, who uh, made a billion dollars uh, thanks to the government uh, during the last recession, uh, while he foreclosed on 100,000 families, including 23,000 seniors, we are giving him enormous discretion in terms of how the bailout money is spent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, that's that's the main concern that I have. Obviously, there's a lot of things put in there that could be very good for consumers. Uh, for example, the massive expansion of unemployment benefits up to 100 percent of salaries, uh, the checks that are going to go out to folks. Uh, but there's certainly a lot here for Wall Street. And also, at the same time, importantly, that the Congress is debating this bill, we're seeing the Trump administration move forward with its regular deregulatory efforts. And just today, the banking regulators uh, put together a new rule that they're going to implement that gives banks carte blanche to make high interest payday loans. So at exactly the moment that people are going to be most vulnerable, the shackles are being taken off the banking industry to offer us usurious products to help us make our rent. Um, so there are so many things to keep track of. It's very difficult, some good, uh, some very concerning. Well, I, I had not heard about that most recent uh, development yet. So thank you for, for letting us know about that. Um, I'm glad that you brought up Steve Mnuchin. Uh, I'm very worried about his involvement in this. And I know that in the past couple of days, they I'm hearing word that they've added new safeguards. So there's this inspector general who is going to be uh, looking into this, as well as you're going to have um, th this committee that's going to theoretically provide some oversight. Um, how reassuring do you find those developments? Does that represent real oversight, a real limitation on what Steve Mnuchin can do with all this money? Unclear. Um, what I understand is that this is in, in many ways modeled after the special invest, uh, inspector general that was put in place on the TARP, the bank bailout in 2008. Now, anyone who thinks that the bank bailout in 2008 was done in a way that ultimately advantaged consumers instead of the big banks has another thing coming, right? And one of the problems with that was that the government gave all the money to the banks. And then after the fact, there was this inspector general who went in and investigated to make sure that they were following the law. And so my understanding is that we're going to end up with something very similar this time where there is going to be a special invest inspector general. There's going to be a special pandemic oversight panel. Uh, so there's going to be really an ability to get in after the fact and evaluate if things were done correctly. But we need something in real time. We, we can't trust Steve Mnuchin to give out all this bailout money to uh, corporate America and then afterwards investigate if he did a good job. We need oversight in real time to make sure that hundreds of billions of dollars are you know, given out uh, correctly. And, uh, you know, we, we I mean, one person said to me yesterday, uh, it's not outside the realm of possibility that Steve Mnuchin and other Trump associates could go around shaking down uh, industries uh, 
telling them that they needed to make contributions to the Trump campaign for president, and only then they would get bailout money. Now, under this situation that we have now, there might be a special inspector general who could then come in after the fact and investigate, but we all know that, that those activities take a really long time. And so the question that I'm asking is, what are the real-time checks on Steve Mnuchin, on other members of the Trump inner circle to prevent the graft and corruption that may take place from uh, taking place before the money leaves the treasury. Yeah, and yeah, you investigated afterward. They still had the money. They still spent the money. In your example, they would have still spent the money already uh, in the campaign. It might be long past the campaign for some of this investigation to actually play out. And so, like, I, I don't want you know, these responsible news outlets to do stories about the corruption they've uncovered two years from now. I want it to be stopped so that we don't actually have the corruption. And unfortunately, it looks like... Right, we're in checks and balances. We're operating in a situation right now, uh, which is, you know, it's it's unforeseen in our nation's history, right, that, that we would have uh, negotiations over this legislation happening on conference calls, in video chats, because everyone is sheltering in place at home. Mm -hmm. The amount of transparency that we are witnessing now is basically nothing compared to what we would usually see. And so when you know the characters in the Trump administration, you know Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, is a vulture capitalist who took the taxpayers' money to run a foreclosure machine in the last recession. You know that Wilbur Ross, the uh, Commerce Secretary, is a vulture capitalist and a bankruptcy expert whose whole career before government was meant, was, was basically extracting maximum profit for himself out of distressed situations. We know that the president's oldest friend, Tom Barrack, uh, who introduced him at the Ivanka at the Republican convention and planned his inauguration, that he is a contrarian investor and vulture capitalist. Mm. So we have all these people swimming around the president uh, in his ear, you know, helping him make policy, leading the rescue effort. And we're being told that there will be an inspector general, there will be an oversight panel uh, like after the money is out the door, um, I'm wondering like what are going to be the checks and balances before that. And of course, we are in an emergency situation. Um, and you know, for a reporter like myself, just like just like you, you know, I'm at home, uh, you're at home, uh, and so these things are happening behind closed doors. And we can't even, as reporters do what we would usually do, which would be stand outside of the door and see who comes in and goes out and try to buttonhole them and ask them tough questions. Um, even that is made more difficult by the current situation. Yeah, it's a, it's a historically low level of access to information at the same time that historically large amounts of money are going out the door. It seems like a, a recipe for a potential disaster. Um, but one that was greeted this morning, at least, with uh, uh, you know an uptick in the market. Like we had the news about the more than three million um, uh, new unemployment claims, at least to the the initial reports, and yet the market opened up. So they certainly seemed to like what they're seeing out of that bill. Well, I mean, we have to be happy that Congress and and the president are doing something and going to try to rescue the economy. And I think that. You know, all of us, uh, the worst thing that could happen would be that no help would be on the way. And we, mm. we do see um, kind of a mix of bailouts for Wall Street and bailouts for the American people here. Uh, you know, we also have to keep our eye not only on Congress and the president, but also on the Federal Reserve and the federal banking regulators. You know, I was mentioning earlier how the Trump uh, banking regulators have basically taken the handcuffs off of payday lenders. Uh, another thing that's happened is that the Federal Reserve, which again has it, it's, you know, stacked also with Trump appointees now, we have to re remember, um, has uh, given the go ahead to buy up mortgage backed securities now on uh, commercial. Uh, commercial mortgage-backed securities. And this coincidentally happened right after Tom Barrack, the president's old friend, who is heavily invested in commercial mortgage-backed securities and was worried about a margin call and his whole business collapsing, tweeted for the first time in four years over the weekend <laughs> uh, asking for action. And magically, uh, before the markets opened on Monday or just as the markets opened, the Fed intervened and said, yes, they will stop buying up this debt. So for your viewers who are like, what does all this mean? It means that if there's a shopping mall, right, 
which right now, because of the coronavirus, is empty, that there is nobody going to the shopping mall, every store is closed, all the tenants in that shopping mall are not able to make their payments. So Tom Barrick, the president's friend, is a Wall Street guy who's holding that paper, right? And, and he doesn't want to default on his loan. So what's happening now is that the Federal Reserve is going and buying up that debt basically giving a bailout to people like Tom Barrick uh, with no involvement of any of our other elected officials. And there's so many of those types of things going on right now that we can scarcely keep track of it. And it all includes an incredible amount of jargon. So I was on the phone yesterday with you know academics and other experts having them walk me through some of these very complicated things that our federal banking regulators are doing right that are causing tremendous amount of money to change hands uh, with with no understanding or sunshine uh, to the American public. Yeah, yeah. I, I myself, I've been tracking as much as I can, and uh, and it's hard to, to keep up with some of it. Um, I'm, I'm curious, from your point of view, we've talked a bit about some of what they're they're already doing. Um, what are some of the, the next steps that you'd like to see, assuming that they, they figure out a way to do their sort of remote voting that they're probably going to need to do in the very near future? Um, what, what should be the next step? And, and also, do you think that they will take it? Well, I mean, there's so many unanswered questions here that I'm looking for answers on. For example, one good thing that's happened is that we have eviction moratoriums in many parts of the country now. And we have uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and HUD, which own the vast majority of residential mortgages, all putting foreclosure moratoriums on and announcing forbearance, meaning that if you are impacted by the coronavirus, uh, you don't have to make your payments right now. So that is all very good news. It also raises a lot of questions, like how does somebody access this forbearance program? Uh, how do, you know, it, uh, when the forbearance runs out in a few months, uh, will it be extended? If it's not extended, are you gonna have people who are out of work uh, facing gigantic balloon payments? Uh, if you have tenants, who have an eviction moratorium in place, right? Um, and they're not able to pay their rent. Uh, you know, there's gonna be mom and pop landlords out there that are not gonna be able to pay their mortgage on that building. What's gonna happen to them? What's gonna happen to that building? So there are so many unanswered questions right now. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of it, as you can see, asking questions about what's gonna be happening in our economy a month or two down the line. Uh, meantime, Congress is up late at night just trying to stop the bleeding. Exactly, yeah. You, uh, you are definitely gonna have your work cut out for you. And uh, many of the normal tools uh, for doing that work have been cut off. So, um, you know, <laughs> good luck. Uh, and thank you uh, for joining us today and helping break some of this down. Perhaps we can we can check in in a little bit um, if they're considering new legislation, something like that. Uh, but Aaron Glantz, we really appreciate you joining us. All right. Thank you. Thanks for uh, keeping watch. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.